Hello, everyone. I'm Chris Lemaire, a programmer at the American Cinematheque. Uh, and it's my great pleasure to welcome you to our tribute to two-time Academy Award-nominated screenwriter, Tony Kushner. Uh, today, Tony is joining us to talk about his work on Steven Spielberg's latest film, West Side Story. Our moderator is Jim Hemphill, writer, filmmaker, and longtime friend of the American Cinematheque. Before we start, I just want to send a thanks to our friends at Disney and 20th Century Studios uh, for making this event possible. And also, as always, send a big thank you to all our American Cinematheque members joining us. We're so grateful for your continued support. Enjoy the conversation. Hi, everybody. My name is Jim Hempel, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to the American Cinematheque discussion of West Side Story with writer and executive producer Tony Kushner. Welcome, Tony. Thanks, Jim. Nice to be here. Uh, well, so uh, this movie, West Side Story, you know, it seems to me like the idea of remaking the original West Side Story would be extremely intimidating for all kinds of reasons. And I'm curious, how did Spielberg first approach you about it? And what was your reaction when you first heard he wanted to do it? Well, I've said this already um, in public. I don't know if I should have. Uh, um, we were meeting for breakfast uh, on the Upper West Side. Um, I don't remember. I think we were in the middle of working on another project and he, uh, we met for breakfast and he said, I have an idea for a thing that I want to do um, down the road and uh, I'd like you to be the screenwriter. And I said, great, what is it? And he said, well, I want to remake West Side Story. And I maintained my cool and I said, you know, that's uh, interesting, Stephen. Why do you want to do that? And he told me some things that he was thinking about and I thought, well, this is all or at least I told him, I thought this sounds great. And I said, let me think about it. And then I went home and I told my husband that I thought he was nuts. <laughs> and that uh, it seemed like uh, an absolute recipe for disaster and, uh, and, and a lot of uh, pain and misery on the way um, because we both uh, love West Side Story very, very much. The original Broadway musical, but also the Robert Wise, Drum Robbins film from 61. Um, and, and, you know, although I don't think anybody that loves the movie thinks that it's absolutely um, perfect in every regard, there are a number of things about it that are, that are problematic, but it transcends those problems and triumphs in this kind of uh, absolutely, I think, uh, inarguable way. And, and, uh, and is, you know, immensely influential uh, a film in the history of uh, American cinema and the history of American dance, certainly, and and songwriting. I mean, it's you know, it's a, it was an enormous hit, and uh, and it seemed like a crazy thing to want to go near it. And I, I rely on Mark, my husband, Mark Harris, uh, for uh, advice about pretty much everything because um, he's very uh, sensible. Um, and I was surprised that he didn't immediately laugh and say, well, that's crazy. How are you going to get out of that? He, he said, well, that was an interesting idea. And uh, I think probably what uh, uh, sort of snagged Mark's interest instantly, and I think was interesting to me immediately, although I, I was thinking, surely there's another musical that we could do, was the idea of somebody like Stephen directing uh, a musical. I, I love the art form. I, I think musicals are, are a great American art form. I think they're um, at their best. And you know, there are as few genuinely great musicals as there are genuinely great films or anything else. I mean, the vast majority of everything that gets produced is not particularly uh, uh, great. But the, the great musicals, I think, are, are, um, are genuinely great, complex, rich works of art. And there's no musical greater than West Side Story. And, and because of Stephen's incredible uh, understanding of how to use a camera to tell a story um, and his great storytelling uh, abilities and uh, um, his love of music. I mean, there's just any number of things made this a very exciting thing as well as seeming like a kind of a, uh, um, a really crazy thing to do. So I, uh, I, I, I thought about it, and, and I've also said this before, Mark said the only problem that I can see that, that's insurmountable is what do you do with the character of Doc, which we both agreed is like one of the most difficult parts of the original film. And, uh, and I said, yeah, that, among other things, and Mark said, well, I have an idea to make him into a Puerto Rican 
woman uh, and cast Rita Moreno. And I think that probably really was for me the moment that I thought, okay, well, if I call Stephen and I tell him that idea and he loves it, I guess I'm in. So I called Stephen and I told him and he said, that's amazing, let's do that. So I said, okay, I'm, I'll do it. And there we went. Well, and what kind of conversations did you have with Rita Moreno over the course of this, since obviously she was a major part of the original? Yeah, um, we decided not to approach her until we had finished, until I had finished the first draft. Uh, and actually, as has been the case with uh, everything I've done for Stephen, a first draft means a second draft because he uh, gets the first draft and then we do a lot of work together on that. Um, but when he had a draft that he felt uh, uh, confident about and we had started to show it to the rights holders, to Steve Sondheim uh, and the Bernstein kids and David Saint for Arthur Lawrence and the Robbins uh, Foundation to get their approval, uh, he felt it was time to approach Rita. So uh, he called her and uh, uh, she was thrilled and said, yes, at first, I mean, she, she tells this story in her documentary and other places that she was nervous that it was gonna be a cameo, that she would be like standing in a crowd or something. And she said, I don't really wanna do that. And he said, no, 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 it's a, it's a serious part. And by this time I had uh, had the idea to give her somewhere to sing. And uh, so he said, you know, and you'll sing somewhere. And she said, I'm in. Um, and she was very excited about it. I'd known Rita uh, for a while. I'd met her at a couple. I met her first at the White House, I think, uh, at, at a National Medal of the Arts ceremony. Um, and I met her at Broadway openings. And a good friend of mine directed her one woman show. Uh, so, you know, the, the first conversation I had with her was sort of nonsensical because uh, I don't speak Spanish and there's a lot of Spanish in West Side Story. And I wanted to indicate where the Spanish was going to be. Um, uh, but I, I wanted to get the script written before I really dug into rendering lines uh, in playable uh, Puerto Rican Spanish. So I just did a Google Translate version of the lines in Spanish sort of say, here's they play, they were placeholders. And I had meant to get somebody to at least turn it into real, you know, comprehensible Spanish before sending it to anyone who spoke Spanish. And then somehow or other, uh, the script got sent to Rita a week before uh, I realized it was going to be. And I realized with horror that she had, and her first call was, what in the hell is this? <laughs> this is like gobbledygook. Whoa. <laughs> And I said, no, 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 it's a placeholders, placeholders, placeholders. Um, then we had a conversation. She did an interview uh, when the news got out that she was doing it. And she said something like, I, I'm excited about it. I'm a little bit nervous that Tony Kushner is writing it. I hope it's not going to be too gritty. And, the, and Rita likes to say, talk. And uh, the interviewer quoted her with that. And she got incredibly upset and called me and said, oh, my God, you're going to fire me. Please don't fire me. <laughs> I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. It was very silly. Um, once we got through all that, we, uh, you know, Stephen and Christy McCosco Krieger, the producer, and I went to Rita's house in Berkeley. She made us a giant uh, Puerto Rican dinner. She wanted to do that as a way of starting our work. We talked a lot about the work that she had done in uh, preparing to play Anita for Robbins and Wise and the experience that she'd had with the film and then just sort of about the story, West Side Story about Puerto Rican history, Puerto Rican politics, her own experience as a five-year-old girl coming uh, from Puerto Rico to New York on a boat with her mother. Um, and uh, we had a big discussion about the subtitling of the Spanish. I think Rita was at first uh, uh, apprehensive about not subtitling it. Um, uh, I was adamant that I really didn't want it subtitled. And, uh, and when I explained why I felt that was important, uh, she converted pretty quickly. And, uh, and um, uh, we kept her abreast of casting as it went along. And, uh, and, and then from day one of rehearsals, she was, she was, you know, sort of the, she was a member of the cast. She was an executive producer. She was a uh, den mother to a lot of the actors. I mean, people couldn't believe that Rita Moreno was, in, you know, the, in the first two days they got to meet Rita and then Stephen Sondheim. 
So the and there's very it's a young cast. They were pretty. Uh, plus they got to meet Steven Spielberg. So it was a you know there was a lot. Um, uh, and I, I can't imagine. I don't think we could have made the movie without her. I think we 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 really needed to have her. And and the more we worked with her, the more I think both Stephen and I realized that we were not only getting this incredibly great actress who uh, I mean, and I really do think Rita's a, a a talent of the first order. I mean, just uh, uh, absolutely. In her documentary, you see her in a screen a scene with Brando, and I think she acts him off the screen. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, somebody who uh in 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 our film helps to sort of forge um uh, not only a link to this uh to the first film which we loved but also um a kind of a living human bridge in a way uh, uh her life spans you know i mean substantially before west side story was filmed but but you think of her as Anita and now as Valentina and the time between then and now. And I, th I thought I had hoped that that would be what would happen if people saw her sing somewhere. And I think it does happen that you feel the weight of all of that time and uh, how much progress there's been and how much progress there hasn't been and how this incredibly beautiful but painful longing in that song written in 1957, uh, uh, the, the longing is still as intense in part because it's a, it's a longing for a, sort of an unrealizable paradisaical kind of place, but it's also a longing for justice and it's a longing for um, uh, uh, a, a decent, uh, a more decent world and and we're not there yet and we have made progress but we're really really not there and i think that that is in rita's performance and i sort of knew that that that, that would be so well and you mentioned that sondheim was around as well uh how involved was he throughout the production and what kinds of things did he bring to you what again what kind of conversations did you have with him uh i've known steve for i think uh, i think i met him first in uh like 2000 and maybe even earlier than that um uh but we had, we weren't close friends but we were friends and we liked each other i interviewed him on stage a couple of times when his uh, big book of lyrics two volumes of lyrics came out um i uh worship him with you know uh, something verging on idolatry i mean i think as do most people who work in the theater most people who love the musical as a form, I mean, he is its greatest uh, practitioner, and uh, and really a genius. Um, and uh, uh, so we 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 knew each other and we liked each other. And uh, uh, when I said yes to doing the screenplay, I called him immediately and I said, "Do you think this is a, this is a crazy thing to do?" Uh, along with Bernstein and Arthur Lawrence, uh, Steve was never an enormous fan of the '61 film. Um, he was never, in fact, a huge fan of the musical itself. It was his first professional outing. He didn't want to write lyrics alone. He wanted to write lyrics and compose. Um, Oscar Hammerstein, his mentor, told him, take this job. Arthur Lawrence introduced him to Bernstein. It was supposed to be Comden and Green. Uh, and uh, they were, they, but that was when they started working on this and it was East Side Story and it was set uh on the upper east side between a jewish boy and a catholic girl and it was a whole other thing that was in the early 50s when robbins first had the idea of doing romeo and juliet in new york then they dropped the project because they couldn't get anywhere with the idea it wasn't really i think especially bernstein wasn't feeling turned on by it and then famously uh in 55 56 uh, when Bernstein was in LA uh, doing the score for On the Waterfront and uh, Arthur Lawrence was in LA doing the screenplay for Hitchcock's Rope. Uh, they were both at the pool at the Chateau Marmont as one is. And, uh, and uh, Arthur was reading a, a newspaper account of a fight between uh, Chicano kids and white kids in a neighborhood in LA and uh and arthur said to bernstein you know maybe we should go back to this romeo and juliet idea but it, instead of making it jews and catholics why don't we make it like set it in la and make it chicanos and white kids and bernstein said that's a great idea but i don't want to set it in 
LA, I want it to stay in New York, but let's move it to the West Side and make it between Puerto Ricans and white kids uh, in, in, uh, on the West Side. And there it was. And at that point, they went back to Compton and Green, who were busy working on another show. I don't know what they were doing, so they weren't available. And Arthur Lawrence said to Bernstein, I have this really remarkable guy that I've just met at a party. Uh, and he's a great songwriter and you should let him come and play some of his songs for you. And so Sondheim went to Bernstein's apartment in the Dakota and played some stuff. And Bernstein said, uh, I don't know that I think too much of the music, but uh, the lyrics are amazing. Why don't you write the lyrics for West Side Story? And then Hammerstein said, do it. And Steve did. So they weren't, uh, he wasn't, um, he wasn't in awe either of his own original work um, or of the movie. And he was encouraging about doing this film. He said, I think there's a lot of room for finding new things. And he said he was excited about it. Uh, and uh, he was incredibly supportive all the way through. Everything that I asked him, he started out by saying, I know that you love all my lyrics and you think my lyrics are perfect and I don't think they're perfect and especially West Side Story lyrics. So if you want me to rewrite anything, I'll rewrite so I'll rewrite it for you. Just tell me what you want me to do. He really loved working. I mean, he uh, all his life, he loved sort of being in there, pulling things apart and, and rethinking them. I didn't think except for America, which is the only uh, thing that had a tiny rewrite. There really wasn't anything that I wanted him to, to change. I think his lyrics are absolutely spectacular. But um, when I finished the uh, first, second draft of the script and we finally showed it to him, he was very enthusiastic about it. Uh, and he and I had a couple of sessions at his house on 38th uh, Street where I got to sit with him and work through the whole script. And uh, that was really a dream come true for me because uh, he'd asked me in the past to do, uh, if I wanted to write a book for a musical, and I, I didn't want to write a, a book. It, it, uh, all the really good juicy parts go to the songs and I didn't want to do it, but I really wanted to work with him because I revered him. And, uh, and so this was the closest I got and it was a fantastic experience. I mean, just his incredible uh, intelligence, his incredible um, insight into how musicals work and all sorts of tricks of the trade, like how you prepare in a scene for the arrival of the song without what he called billboarding the song by, you know, sort of stating its thesis and then have the song restated. And, uh, um, and every change we wanted to make, the, the musical change that Janine Tesori and I proposed for Krupke to sort of slow it down at the beginning so people have an easier time hearing what the lyrics are really saying, that it's not all fun and games before it attains its uh, intended tempo. Um, he was behind us uh, on every single, he came to all the pre-record sessions. Uh, he kept saying to the actors, you know, don't worry so much about the, hitting the notes. Uh, just really make sure you know at every moment why you're saying what you're saying. What are you trying to do? I mean, he really was a dramatist, uh, which is why I think he was so incredibly great as a composer for musical theater. He, he really understood dramatic action and was, uh, you know, it was just phenomenal to have him. And one of the nicest things was that he and uh, Spielberg didn't know each other at all and they became very good friends. Uh, Sondheim has said in many places that he really, you know, he studied composition at Yale with Milton Babbitt. Um, uh, but he says, and then he worked for a long time with Oscar Hammerstein, but he said his real, uh, education in music uh, and composition began uh, by listening to film scores that he he was a huge film buff he could even stump uh, Spielberg which is difficult to do uh, and uh, and and he learned by listening to all the great composers that wrote you know the, the classic scores and I think you can hear that in a lot of his music you can hear a certain you know again it's it's music that has been, enlisted for the purpose of advancing drama. And, uh, and I think you can hear that, the influence of that in, in Sondheim's work. Definitely. Uh, well, you brought up America and that's one of my favorite sequences in the movie. I think, you know, directorially, I think that scene is one of the greatest things Spielberg has ever done. It's absolutely mind blowing. And 
I'm curious uh, what it was about that song that made that the one that you wanted to tweak a little bit and revise with Sondheim. Um, well, it was, uh, th there was a political issue. Um, you know, in the original musical, it's an argument between two groups of women um, who are waiting for the guys uh, after the dance at the gym. And they're, um, they're arguing about whether or not they're going to, um, they want to stay here in New York or go back to Puerto Rico. And uh, it starts out with one of the, with Rosalia, one of the uh, uh, Puerto Rican characters saying to Anita, uh, singing this kind of hymn to Puerto Rico, Puerto Rico, you lovely island, island of tropical breezes, et cetera. Um, and, uh, and then Anita responds, uh, Puerto Rico, you ugly island, island of tropic diseases, et cetera. And uh, there was, um, although, I think historically, I'm correct in saying this, there was an enormous amount of excitement first uh, in the Latino community uh, when West Side Story appeared first, you know, because of Cheetah Rivera, who played Anita in the original, won the Tony Award. Uh, and then when Rita won the Oscar, I mean, it was a very big deal. And, uh, and I think um, there was a recognition that the fund, whatever the, the four gay Jews who wrote West Side Story got wrong, they got a lot right as well, and that their intentions were really honorable, which were, it was, it's, it is an anti-racist musical. But they made one big mistake, which is that uh, they used, you know, they were all children of immigrants or children of children of immigrants. Uh, and uh, even though Puerto Ricans are not immigrants, they're uh, people who've come to New York from Puerto Rico are migrants. Um, I think Bernstein and Sondheim and Lawrence and Robbins uh, decided that, uh, made a decision that, that the relationship of all people who have recently arrived in the United States to the old country, to wherever you've come from, must pretty much be the same, which is, you know, to hell with that, you know, let it sink in the ocean, as the song at one point, you know, Puerto Rico, my heart's devotion, let it sink back in the ocean. Um, and that's a mistake. They, 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 even among 19th century uh, waves of immigration, they had a, one great example of uh, among the Irish of people who had come from an island because they had been driven away by colonization and uh, and brutalization by a colonial power, namely the English, and uh, and were very happy to be in the United States, but also maintained a deep, you know. A, a bone deep affection for the island that they had come from. And uh, they, they, that didn't occur to them. So they decided the Puerto Ricans felt about Puerto Rico, what Jews felt about Russia, which is, you know, fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and that was a mistake. So they, uh, the original version of West Side Story contained these very uh, angry lyrics from Anita about how terrible a place Puerto Rico is. And the whole song then proceeded to say, for everything that uh, Rosalia complains about being in New York, Anita says, oh, but it's so much worse in Puerto Rico. And uh, there, was a, uh, there was a fence taken by that. A number of Puerto Ricans wrote in El Diario and other uh, Spanish language publications said, you know, this is, you know, this was a moment when uh, Puerto Rican nationalism, as well as the drive for statehood, was really, you know, uh, gathering momentum and making headlines uh, in in the United States. And there was a feeling that this song was not was not doing disservice. And Rita said that she was thrilled to get the part, but when she really looked at those lyrics from the show, from the Broadway show, she said, "I'm not, how am I going to sing this? I don't know if I can." And Sondheim, I think on his own, I mean, I've never read that he was asked to do this. I think he did it on his own because he was a very progressive guy um, and very smart politically, rewrote the song um, and, uh, and, and made it not about how terrible Puerto Rico is, but about how much discrimination Puerto Ricans were facing in New York. Um, but the introduction, because Robin said, I don't want to do it between, I have a new idea for it, I want to do it between men and women, and that's where the astonishing dance on the rooftop comes from. Uh, Sondheim got rid of the two different people singing about Puerto Rico at the beginning and made it just Anita. And so the lyrics, since Anita wants to stay in New York, 
are still, they're not as nasty about Puerto Rico, but they're not great. That's where Puerto Rico, my heart's devotion, let it sink back in the ocean comes from. So I talked to Steve about that and I talked to Spielberg about that a lot. And we decided we had to do something and we wound up doing an amalgam of Rosalia's lyrics from the original musical. And there is actually one new line. Um, uh, um, that Sondheim added uh, and the, uh, he, he called me at one point and said, I have a new line that I want to stick in is that when the babies uh, cry, I had told him that bullets flying was not uh, historically, we had had this argument because he decided that he wanted to change when uh, Bernardo and the other sharks say, uh, Anita says, free to be anything you choose. And then they respond, free to wait tables and shine shoes. And uh, Steve said, I don't, I don't like that. I hate that lyric. Uh, I don't know what I, why I did that. Uh, uh, Puerto Ricans worked in restaurants or they worked in the garment district or they worked, you know, and uh, there were teamsters, but they didn't sign, shine shoes. That was not a job. You didn't see Puerto Rican shoe shine. The most most uh, shoe shine people that you saw were uh, black men. And I said, yes, yeah, Steve, but there were black Puerto Ricans. So maybe some of them were Puerto Rican. He goes, ah, that's not the point. I don't think, I think it was the wrong occupation. So he kept trying to change that couplet. And I think it's such a, I finally said, I please leave it alone. It's so great. It's such a brilliant response, leave it alone. And he, he did, but then I said, you know, and speaking of being historically accurate, I did a lot of research about gun violence for the movie and discovered that A, there wasn't a whole lot of gun violence anywhere uh, in, you know, but B, uh, that there was far less of it in, in San Juan in Puerto Rico than there was in New York City, for instance. So the line, the bullets flying was not exactly accurate. It was based on a, a cliche about, you know, the, 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 that San Juan was a sort of a crime ridden city, which it actually wasn't. Um, it was poor, but it wasn't, it wasn't uh, crime ridden. And uh, Steve called a few days later and said, I, I've changed it, I, the, ba uh, the baby's crying. Uh, uh, crying and the people trying. It's not not his best lyric, but I was really moved by that because he really he he got the he got the gist of the criticism, which was you know uh, the the he wanted to honor the struggle uh, of of uh, Puerto Rican people, so he he put in that new lyric. So that's substantially changed. I think those are the only lyrics. The only other lyric change is that um, because I gave somewhere to Valentina, Sondheim said, well, so what is Maria gonna sing to Tony when he's dying? Cause she's never heard the song now. He waited until we were like midway through filming to point that out. <laughs> and I thought, well, okay, I don't know quite what to do with that. And then I thought, oh, you know what? I, I love it that she sings somewhere cause it's, it's, it, it rips your heart out. But on the other hand, She's promising him at the last minute moments of his life something that she doesn't really know that she can deliver, which is, you know, that they'll meet again somewhere. Um, and I thought there is something that she could sing to him that she's already said to him that uh, she really can deliver and that he knows she can, she will um, uh, be as good as her word. And that's uh, only you, you're the only one for me forever. In my, in my eyes and my words and in everything I do, nothing else but you, her, that, that she can promise him that she'll never forget him and that she'll always be in love with him and that she'll keep him in some way in, in, in her heart. And uh, so I switched, I asked Sanam if I could switch that. And he said, oh, I wish I thought of that. <laughs> Which made me feel very uh, proud. Well, I could talk to you about this movie all day, but uh, we're already running out of time. And I just want to say, you know, I guess the best compliment I can pay you is that the 1961 West Side Story is my favorite musical of all time. And I feel like you guys did a fantastic job of delivering the satisfactions of that movie while also coming up with enough new to make this one justified. So uh, well, okay. congratulations on a great movie and thanks for taking the time to talk with me about it. Thanks. Very nice to talk to you. Okay.